as people have said, I'm Therese and I'm one of the social workers on the subacute site and I've worked in rehab for a number of years and part of the social worker role is to really try to address the psychosocial impact of illness and hospitalisation. Um, part of the, the role is obviously to assist patients with a smooth transition from hospital to home. We work part of, part of a team and it is a very much much of a team focus um, within the rehab setting. And part of the social worker role too is to be the key contact person um, for the family. Um, so often some of our work will be obviously working with the patients but also organising family conferences and things like that to provide ed information and ed education to family members. I've had the privilege to work with Janet when she was in the rehab unit and I think um, their experiences very much highlight um, very well the meaning of driving to people in the community. Um, it's associated obviously with people's identity, their roles in society and, and family. Um, the positive benefits of driving obviously include independence and spontaneity and, and comfort. Um, being able to just go out of your home and jump into, into your car is something we take for granted. Um, driving, I can't say it, stopping driving, um, <laughs> can have negative um, social and psychological consequences. Um, and some of those have been illustrated today by Janet, loss of identity, loss of um, employment in the community, it may cause conflict in, in their relationships with their loved ones. Um, obviously, people often experience a loss of control um, and very much so social isolation. Many of the activities they may previously have enjoyed are no longer available to them. Um, the impact on the care or the family, I suppose we as a treating team often um, encourage patients to, when they first go home, not make hasty decisions about driving, getting back to those sorts of things, to allow them to have time to recover physically and psychologically from their whole, the, the whole trauma. Um, that's fine, but we often assume that families can come in and take over that role, and that, that places a significant burden on them. It can cause strain for the family members, and it can disrupt their home and work and community activities in their own right. That conflicting desire of a family to provide safety to their loved one, but also to balance that, the need for their independence is obviously extremely important. Um, so I suppose part of the social work intervention and as part of the team is to work with the patient and families, um, all patients in subacute, um, and either of those people may raise concerns regarding their driving capacity in terms of their history and also concerns about their capacity to drive in the future. Um, my responsibility as a social worker, as uh, uh, like other people in the team, is to report those, those issues back to the treating team. And I suppose, as Chris has pointed out, we don't always do that very well um, in a systematic way. And it would be really good to think that driving is something that we look at for all inpatients. Um, I also believe that we need to inform the patient and also the family of our recommendations. Um, and obviously the fact sheets, et cetera, that we talked about this morning that, that are now available might be really useful to be able to give to people um, when they're in hospital about some of the concerns and the processes they may need to go through to resume their, um, their driving. Part of the role also is to provide emotional support to patients and families, including the adjustment to their new status. So it may be that people in fact cannot resume driving as they once did. And then it's about, I suppose, the social worker and the rest of the team helping to identify alternatives to enable community access, which we know is important for people to have meaningful roles in, in our society. Um, some of the community resources are well illustrated today. In seminar room one, we have a whole display 
of different organisations and, and um, people that are available to speak to you at lunchtime about, about some things that may overcome some issues around getting back into the community. As Janet mentioned, there's things like half price taxi cards, which are still costly. Red Cross can often provide transport to medical appointments. We're lucky in Ballarat to have Uniting Care Community Transport um, that's based around a system of volunteer drivers. We have schemes like um, VIPTAS, or Victorian Patient Transport Assist Assistance Scheme, which also will give some assistance um, for travel and accommodation costs for people who need to travel 100 kilometres or more to specialist appointments. There's things like companion cards, dis uh, disabled parking, permits, etc. And I suppose one of the roles of social work may be to look at trying to link people into support services that will allow, allow them to continue um, their active participation, as I said before, in the community. So things like community aged care packages where perhaps a carer can take someone to appointments is all part of it. And the aim of those things, as I said, is to minimise the impact of their, their disability. Um, in summary, I'd just like to say, and I suppose it's just reiterating what people have been saying all morning, that um, we know that driving is important in our society. We need to acknowledge that. We know that the, the, the loss of that ability to drive does cause difficulties for people. We need to balance the best interests of the individual and public safety, and obviously we've covered a lot of that this morning. Um, Obviously, if we can develop a plan for driving cessation, um, that is the best way to do it. If in, in conditions like dementia, et cetera, if we can start that discussion early, um, that helps the person adjust, perhaps makes new plans um, for the future. They may need to look at relocating their house or whatever to be able to be closer to the facilities they need to access in the community. Obviously to involve the patient and the family in the decision making process so that they understand as much as possible where we're coming from as a health service. Um, as I said, to provide information again to patients and families on alternatives. And in terms of public policy, I suppose, particularly for people in rural areas, the development of alternative transport options for people who can no longer drive is extremely important. Okay, thank you.